Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the camp session. So uh, let's start. So uh, this time, actually, we have very uh, busy uh, agenda. So uh, for the chairs uh, slot, we only have five minutes. So I will uh, go through some general information very quickly. And so for the loads where information, I think you, you, you know it very well. And uh, as usual, we have the, you know, audio recording. So uh, please in, uh, speak in front of the mic and uh, state your name before speaking. And also, you know, um, our secretary uh, is not here. So um, it will be uh, appreciated if anyone could take some minutes to east path. Okay, thank you. And uh, we also uh, we are monitor the jam balloon to see if there are some comments from the jam balloon. Sessions we have two sessions this time. So uh, the first one is CCAM only, and uh, the second one is a joint session now uh, with uh, MPS and the TS and the PCE working groups and uh, it will be on Friday uh, morning. So, and also you can get the slides from the link. So look at the uh, agenda. Actually, uh, you know, uh, this agenda is uh, a little bit busy. So uh, please follow uh, the agenda and uh, use the uh, slot very uh, efficiently. So I think it's, uh, it's better for the presenters to uh, introduce some updates or changes quickly and a little more time for a technical discussion. Okay. Yes, Let, let's quickly go through a short update uh, of, the, of the status of the working group. Actually, we don't have any new RADA, EVATA, RFC, no document in the, uh, in the editor queue. But we have one document in the ISG processing. Actually, we have another document uh, um, <clears throat> which uh, uh, was uh, uh, sent to the ISG, the OSPF uh, availability draft. But it was uh, sent back to the working group because we decided uh, uh, not to do a specific encoding for that document, but we decided to have it uh, in a more generalized way. We submitted uh, a document to the TIS working group. We asked if it was possible to have a fast path uh, for that document. Uh, thanks uh, uh, to the help uh, from the chairman of, uh, of uh, the TIS working group, this is happening. So we will be soon able to progress this document uh, and reference uh, the document uh, in, uh, in TIS. Uh, working group uh, drafts. We have uh, three documents being discussed uh, today. Uh, and uh, a number of documents that uh, will not be discussed. We received uh, 
some uh, updates uh, on the main lists, um, but and the, just summarize them uh, here. Uh, so the flexi grid or SPF uh, is in the editor too. The document is done, approved. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, doing the right stuff. We needed to take a decision uh, on how to progress uh, the um, LMP extensions uh, for uh, for flexi grid. The document has been around for uh, for a while, uh, but uh, um, there was uh, not big interest, uh, if I correctly remember, from the last meeting uh, on uh, on the document. So we need to decide how to progress that. Uh, the OSPF availability extension is the document I was uh, speaking about before. It's ready to move forward uh, together with this companion document uh, in uh, TIS, the generalized SCSI extensions. The RSVPT bandwidth availability is a companion document of the OSPF T extensions. It's basically stable and is ready to move uh, to move uh, on uh, after the OSPF uh, is ready. And then we have uh, uh, the Wson uh, impairment aware info model. It was recent, recently refreshed but we didn't get uh, much uh, discussion uh, on the on the main list recently. I don't know if any of the authors would like to provide a short update uh, maybe I don't know who, who, who was the editor Giovanni Gabriele, Gabriele, maybe you you can give us a short update on the document. Gabriele uh, Galimberti, uh, yes, the editor is Giovanni. He uh, did it, um, an upgrade to the document, and I think uh, um, all is done. So we should ask for uh, the last call. I think. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And this is Fatai's fault, not mine. Okay, Rudiger, your turn. So good afternoon, my name is Rudiger Kunze, Deutsche Telekom. So this is the update of the uh, framework document for control and management of uh, single channel optical interfaces. Um, I think motivation is uh, quite clear. We presented this document um, many times here at CCAMP. So first of all, um, what we want to achieve is interoperability. And for that kind of uh, things, we need to exchange and define a, a common set of parameters uh, that we can use in that case. Um, the second topic uh, that we want to address here is um, a better interworking between the layers. So that means um, that the optical and the transport layer um, yeah, could be work more efficient in a more efficient manner than today. So that we addressed uh, here in this document and the scope I presented uh, many times as well is uh, on requirements and use cases. Um, we. Um, described a lot of things here, a lot of use cases, um, and this document should be as well uh, a guidance draft for um, two other documents that are mentioned here on the slides uh, that we are presenting later on. <coughs> so if we look um, on this new version, uh, 04, uh, then we uh, have the following things. So we updated the, the um, requirements section, addressed uh, the comments uh, of the chairs, and uh, yeah, did a lot of rephrasing and error correction, and I deleted some text as well. That is not really necessary and helpful. Um, yeah, that's what we did. Uh, and yeah, we think um, that the document is quite stable and we can go for working group last call. <coughs> From my side. Any question? I I really like the, the uh, removed unnecessary text uh, very much. Okay. And uh, well, actually, I had uh, a, 
a review of the text, uh, I have some minor comments that, in my opinion, can be addressed during the working group last call. Okay, I don't have uh, any issue. Maybe let's see if uh, does anyone have uh, any concern with moving the document towards the last call? Okay, either everyone is sleeping or it's okay. <laughs> Okay, we'll take this to the list. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Who's next? Uh, Young. Uh, hi. Um my name is Young Lee. Um, I'm going to present uh, data, Young Data Model for WSUN Networks. Um, I think the major change is basically um, we updated link attribute um, and added operational state of uh, link attribute. Um, I think I got a comment from Dieter. What is default frequency mean? Here, actually, I meant uh, anchor frequency 193.1 terahertz, uh, which is the position of the free, you know, central frequency uh, when n equals zero. Uh, so I'm going to change that to anchor frequency, which is ITUT term. Um, yeah, and then uh, we kind of clean up uh, node attribute uh, pointing to the right augmentation because uh, the problem of um, this is this is augmentation model from T topology model, and then uh, they kind of migrate themselves to augment from general topology model. So uh, this time uh, we up to date um, uh, make um, up to date uh, augmentation reference, um, and then again added operational state for. Um, node attribute container. Um, and then um, once we publish this, um, we pass the Piang um, check, but uh, later uh, we are informed by um, uh, young doctors that something failed, and then we noticed that connectivity matrix from topology model, they change name to connectivity matrices and then they have connected to matrix. So um, I was um, told that we need to change to make sure that this pass a yeah, PM um, test. So that's something that uh, we are going to do on the next update. Hopefully, the topology will be stabilized. And then I think we, we, we are not going to have this kind of problem. Um, yeah, I think um, this is my last slide for WSUN. Young model, do you have any question? Uh, I have one, yeah. which is um, did you? I don't know if you follow the latest discussion uh, on the relationship between uh, the I2RS topology and the, the T topology. Mm -hmm. The fact that the things uh, could change now. Could uh, a change uh, in the relationship uh, between uh, the two models have impacts? Uh, on this document or not? I don't think so. I think we argument solely from topology model, T topology model. We don't have, if I remember correctly, from network model. So probably dependence may not be there, but I cannot, I have to look it up. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dhruv from Huawei. Uh, basically, the augment path changes from T topology. So we may have to just change the top augment path, not the rest of the model. Okay. Okay. Um, this is a flex grid um, young model. I don't think uh, we ever presented so much. We work on it for a while, but um, the main author, George, um, he doesn't come to ITF. He's a research guy. So um, he asked me to present um, a flex grid um, optical network model. Um, Yeah, I think uh, this is motivation is basically we have um, um, 
a technology specific model. This one addresses flex grid. We have a generic model, I2RS model, and a CTN W Sanyang model. And um, this one basically um, provide flex grid uh, based on um, 7698. Um, and uh, it extends from existing generic Yang model. What that means is a um, TE topology model. Um, there are two uh, sub models within the draft. Uh, one is about a flex grid topology uh, model, and the other one is a media channel model. Um, the authors made a decision to separate uh, into two uh, young drafts um, on the next revision because one is a topology abstraction, the other one is tunnel model. So we don't want to put that into one draft. So it's going to be two separate models to, into two separate drafts. Um, and uh, both models are implemented in Yang 1.1. And, um, and uh, actually, this also passed the Piang verification. But because of uh, connectivity matrix uh, change in the topology model, it fails again. So we have to fix that in the, in the later revision. Um, Actually, there are you know a few things here. Um, future work. Um, uh, we are going to separate a media channel into augmentation of a TE tunnel model in the next uh, revision. It's a separate draft. And um, I think one of the comments from Dito, I believe, um, he want to use application code instead of specific modulation type. Correct? Yeah. So that is actually consistent with the CCAM working group in in JMPLS time too. So this is going to be fixed in the later revision. We recognize the problem. And um, <clears throat> there's a one more, um, you know, we are going to define single operational model attribute for optical channel transponders instead of, you know, making complete list here. Uh, we're going to take similar to open config approach. Um, and uh, as I said, uh, we're going to split into two drafts. And, um, Although this is first time we present, this is already version five, and I know some of you have read, and um, I would ask for working group adoption because this is important extension because of importance of flex grid work. Yep. Um, Dita Beller, Nokia. I have a question for clarification. The draft defines a transponder and I think a sliceable transponder. Uh, for me, it's not clear what right. that um, means, uh, what, specifically what the sliceable transponder is. I think that's a um, um, proprietary uh, term. So we're going to take it out. Okay. Yeah, it's not ITUT defined stuff. I think some are European Union. This is actually an uh, outcome of U European Union research, and they wanted to explore that uh, with a particular vendor, I believe. But it's a uh, proprietary stuff. Yeah. I do script. Um, I, I, uh, I've read the draft. Uh, it's very interesting, but there's one thing I think we should clarify uh, right at the beginning. Um, because flex grid is typically what you use for a coherent transmission, you need a coherent transponder. However, there are no uh, uh, application codes for coherent transponders. So how do we want to solve the discrepancy between what is the purpose of the draft and uh, how to reference it? Yes, I think uh, we are going to um, provide application code for which um, IETOT has defined within that confines. Anything beyond, I don't think um, we want to go that path. That's my comment. Maybe a uh, court has a subsequent comment. <laughs> Igor Briskin. Uh, uh, when we work on the tunnel model, like, uh, we spend a lot of time of adjusting this model with open config. Mm. So have you considered to do the same? So for example, uh, do you want to align uh, your model with the uh, open config uh, WDM um, model? That has not been determined because nobody has looked at it how to use a TA tunnel model. I you recommend use open config TA tunnel model? Uh, I recommend to adjust. So that's adjust. Thing, yeah. yeah. So basically uh, to see in the definitions and uh, basically uh, maybe incorporate them. Uh, hmm. Yeah. 
I don't um, suggest to augment it, but yeah. right. Um, what about um, T tunnel model also themselves within ITF? What is their position on uh, your? We, we actually sp uh, spent like last th probably two or three mm -hmm. meetings uh, adjusting uh, the model with open config. Right. Uh, model. Then we are going to augment your T tunnel model. Tarab is working on. Yeah, but but it's 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 not uh, double DM specific. It's a base. Uh, yes, I understand. It's a basic, but you are talking about. WDM part of open config. Yeah. Yeah, I think you know uh, we are going to consult that for sure. So I suggest to do that. Okay. So coming back to the argument before, um, <laughs> I, I think it was basically responding uh, with let's say two diversion things. So the current ITU standards do not support um, application codes. Mm -hmm. Uh, for anything which is uh, beyond 10 gig uh, direct detection and yeah. 50 or 100 gigahertz. So this one is future looking, it goes um, to FlexGrid. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're saying, okay, we are using the application codes from here in order to do that. So what does no, that mean? No, that's not my point. Um, you know, application code is specific, um, the product of ITOT. So we said we're going to add application code. That means uh, we are limited to whatever is defined. Um, Which is 50 gigahertz and 100 gigahertz, but not flex rate. Yeah, so probably uh, application code, the right place is WSN Young model. Then here, um, you know, it, that can be done because we share the two draft. But this is not something that I can answer this is beyond no. this is not a technical thing that I can answer I think maybe Deborah is here and it's a little bit more higher okay. level or well, working group chairs kind of you know steer us as to how to do this because yeah I, I'm not uh, asking you in right, person. It's, right. it's for the working group we are just a young model guy that's it you know <laughs> <laughs> you're young Lee I know you're a young model <laughs> Uh, following uh, Igor's uh, comments, uh, if we consider open config, we have also to consider, uh, co consider also other kind of models like open road and whatever. <laughs> then it's a unlimited, you are saying, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so they I think, you know, sure, I understand. The, the problem comes when they are orthogonal, getting aligned with it. Right. The temptation well, the is, um, is that's the problem. That is, my my that question mean, for Igor uh, was why open config and not other models? But <laughs> yeah, Dieter again. Uh, I actually um, commented uh, or uh, sent a comment to the Seacamp mailing list on this draft, where I was proposing that we should follow the same approach that open config is using in their Yang models. Uh, instead of defining a, a long list of uh, mm. transponder characteristics, uh, I think they defined an operational mode. And this allows, and uh, I think we have to respect that currently there is no interoperability uh, possible uh, for uh, coherent transponders of 100 gig and beyond because of the missing uh, data plane standards. And as long as that's not the case, uh, we could just uh, follow the approach that OpenConfig was using to define uh, for each vendor uh, operational modes, which would allow uh, to create a path. And if there is an operational mode on the source and the destination that is in common, then there's a good chance that the uh, path is uh, feasible uh, without knowing whether the optical feasibility is uh, given or not. I mean, at least there is some indication whether mm. the um, uh, path could be established between two, uh, two transponders from the same vendors. Uh, my comment was that uh, basically uh, it is, uh, would be very good to look into what other people are doing in this layer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so uh, open config, it's, it's one, uh, I think in my personal preference, it's, it's a better way to do than uh, open the rodom, but uh, nothing precludes also to look into open the rodom and also take whatever you find it useful, uh, semantic to put it there, right? So basically, it, it is very simple to say, you know, you know, we'll ignore everyone and we have like all the expertise we need to define our, our semantics, but uh, it wouldn't be too clever, I think.
uh, Deborah, speaking as AD. Um, so this is a common problem we have that often we're doing work that um, I2 hasn't actually standardized yet with some others. And of course, we don't want to wait for the long window of time. So um, we can continue to progress the document. And the chairs could have answered this. I think it's a, we've done this many times over. And um, we should liaison with I2 to find out the latest status. And um, if it seems really early that they're not ready yet, we can always do it as experimental. Or um, if it seems to be only some interest by one vendor or two, they can do it independent stream. But I think in CCAMP, we like to review it, and then we would just do it as experimental. And so the chairs now are very well able to handle this. We, we always said that we would prefer the experimental track rather than the individual stream. But Especially it's early, up yeah. to the up to the contributors. Yeah, I, because I think all of us are interested here in it. So if we keep it, ex make it experimental, it stays here. Okay, I have one final uh, comment to the authors. I think the authors could double check uh, if flash grade TED uh, young model should augment. Uh, T topology or WSAN topology because I think actually um, uh, this uh, flash grid has much closer relationship with WSAN rather than uh, generic topology, right? Because we can think that we can treat the fixed grid as a kind of special uh, case of flash grid. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Amy from Huawei. So uh, for the next two uh, presentations, I will uh, give an update on two drafts. One is a uh, framework for management and control of uh, microwave and also millimeter wave uh, interface parameters. So here's our author list, our very long list. So um, actually, I don't have much update on this framework draft. And, uh, uh, the draft has just been adopted uh, uh, by the working group in last uh, December. So currently, there is no open topics for this frame draft. And uh, so our design team thought that uh, uh, the framework draft is already done. And so we would like to uh, uh, mm, thinking about we could move it towards the last call. And another point is that uh, uh, we further de uh, developed the young models, and we were based on the, uh, what is defined in this framework draft. And uh, we didn't receive any further feedback since adoption. So this is the uh, current status and the next step for the framework draft. And um, if no further comments, I will move to the next one, which is our uh, young draft. And so this young draft, first of all, uh, an overview, uh, just uh, several uh, key points. The first one is that uh, we follow the framework, which is just mentioned in the first presentation. And uh, another point is that we argument based on RFC uh, 17223. And as you could see from the figure on the top right, yes, uh, we will uh, argument on RFC 17223, and we also leave space uh, for implementation of vendor specific uh, to further argument on that. So you have the frame, uh, the freedom to uh, add what you want. Uh, another point is that. Uh, when we're developing this young model, we take uh, two important uh, uh, inputs. One is from the uh, draft Arbug SICA microwave rig building. Another one is the uh, ONF microwave model. So we were uh, further discussed on, uh, on these two models in the uh, later slides. And on the um, bottom, bottom uh, right, here you could say that uh, uh, what we define the uh, interface hierarchy, and uh, it's actually quite simple. Uh, for the Ethernet and the TDM, that's the typical uh, 
the plant service of the microwave. And um, the radio link terminal and the carrier termination is what we defined in this draft. It's just uh, two layers of the uh, microwave functions. And another point is that uh, here is just an example. You don't have uh, have to be two carrier termination instant, uh, instance, and you could just have a one uh, carrier termination. So uh, update from the zero, uh, and we have a new co-author from NEC, Koji, and uh, we have completed the uh, microwave young data model. Because in the first version, we just uh, defined the young model for the carrier termination configuration. And in this model, in this version, we have completed all the uh, necessary UT part, which includes the TDM connection, uh, RT config and state, and also uh, CT state, and also some protection, uh, XPSE and MIMO. And uh, this young model has uh, successfully uh, passed uh, the P young validation. And so the uh, right part is just uh, um, some examples uh, from the uh, young model, which is uh, this just shows uh, carrier termination and status. And another point is that um, in the latest uh, IDF journal, uh, we have uh, uh, an article to uh, to give a progress uh, on what's been um, going on on this work. It's uh, um, you could check by this web link. Um, this slide is just to uh, give a, a brief example on how to use the uh, model because we think this is quite useful when we are developing the model. And uh, Harris shows a uh, very the simplest example. Uh, the left one is sorry. Left one is just showing uh, from the microwave node view, and you can see there's the switch functions, and then connected to the uh, radio link uh, termination, and then further to carrier termination. And on the uh, right part, right side, you will see how it will be showing uh, from the interface and the interface states. So that's, uh, that's the, uh, below the slides that shows the uh, attributes value for each uh, relative attributes. For example, the Ethernet interface, the only re uh, relevant to this is the uh, low layer interface, which is linked to the RTA. And in, at the RT uh, layer, you will see config um, with its uh, name and its uh, mode, and also how the RLT linked with the carrier termination. And at the uh, carrier, carrier termination layer, then you will see the, uh, uh, the types of uh, name and also the carrier ID. And this slide, we would like to have uh, some clarification on the, uh, what we define here and what's uh, the difference between the ONF model, because we received some uh, comments on that, so we feel it might be necessary to have this clarification. So uh, one, one point is that what is defined in ONF is an uh, information model, and while what we have defined here uh, is a uh, data model. And we have uh, um, get some uh, reference from the uh, existing RFC, such as uh, RFC uh, 3444 and uh, RFC 3198. So basically, uh, the key point is that both the information model and the uh, data model is just to uh, define the management objects but for different purposes. Uh, usually, the information model is uh, uh, defined in a conceptual level, so and while the uh, data model is have a, a more uh, detail, uh, detailed, and another point is that uh, with uh, many implementation details. Uh, so another point fact we found from the RFC thirty one and ninety eight is that there's uh, a statement that a, a data model. It's basically the re rendering of an information model. I think these two RFC explain very well what's the relationship between the data model and the information model. 
And another fact is that when we're developing this uh, uh, young data model in IETF, we take the reference from the ONF information model as a very important input. So this slide is uh, some um, open discussion. Uh, we received, recently received uh, very good comments from Nokia team. And uh, it's include um, some are missing and some to be clarified and some to be updated. So we will uh, continue to have the discussion with uh, Nokia and also we will try to uh, uh, um, have the discussion on, among, the dis among the list. And uh, the further step is that we would like to add some technology uh, specific alarms uh, in our young data model. And then there's uh, some um, uh, questions we would like to hear from the working group, such as uh, whether it's valuable to include the uh, examples uh, just uh, being shown in the previous slides to be including in part of the draft, for example, into a appendix or an annex, whether it's uh, worthwhile, because I personally think it's very worthwhile because that will help to clarify how to use the model. And another point is that should we add the uh, capability into the model? Um, this is a, a question regarding to, uh, for example, uh, if uh, the model defined a uh, function with uh, A, B, and C, well, this particular network elements only can support A, B. So should the network elements to report that my capability is only to A, B, and which is not allowed to configure uh, C? Or another important way is that if uh, I received the configuration on the function C, I just return with an error message, then that's done. So I'm not, we are not quite sure about uh, which approach will be better. And then the last open topic is about the uh, protection part. We include the protection young model in our uh, radio link uh, young model, but I think uh, there's some a generic uh, part, especially for this protection. So we would wonder to know if there is a further interest to uh, put this protection into a uh, even more generic draft. So that's the uh, open discussion. And for next step, we would like to resolve the comments and also uh, on those open discussions. And uh, while we are resolve these comments and questions, I think we are thinking that uh, it will be better to ask for a working group adoption. And, and last point is that we will have a side discussion this week and anyone who is interested, please welcome to join our discussion. Thank you. Question. Good. What time is for the submitting? I think you can send the uh, information. Okay, no problem. And the, the next one is uh, uh, tomorrow, 1.30. I, I could send an email to the list. So, uh, actually, when we adopted the, 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 the framework document, uh, we, received, uh, we received a lot of requests uh, to uh consider the work being done in one effort and uh, uh, the design team did a great job uh, particularly uh, taking into account what is being done in in, in the ONF and the providing us with the clarification between uh, uh, the information model the data model what is done here what is done there but this is really really good job thank you um i I think uh, uh, we could uh, try to uh, sense the temperature, see uh, if the working group is interested in uh, uh, using this document as the starting point for, uh, for the working group uh, work. So, um, first of all, how many of you have read the draft?
everyone that is, is interested in microwave, at least. <laughs> okay. Uh, who is uh, in favor to adopt the draft uh, as a working group document and use it uh, as the basis for our work? Okay. Anyone against? Great, no one. Perfect. So we will take this to the list, but good job. Italo. Always waiting for you. <laughs> Hello, thank you. I'm Italo Busi. I am co-chairing the design team for Transparent BI together with Daniel King, and we are providing a status update about our activities since the last ITF meeting. Uh, the design team has more than 20 participants, so we have not listed all of them. Uh, what is the charter of our work is that uh, we are looking around all the many ITF young models that are being developed and try to understand whether they are applicable to the transport network and whether there are some gaps in the current models that have to be fixed by the designers. Uh, what we are doing now, we are looking at some use cases. So we have discussed with many people from also outside SDO. So the idea is to understand what are the use cases that we need to uh, support in the transport network, taking into account many work that has been done in ONF and MEF. And we are analyzing how, and we started to analyze how the existing young models can be used to address uh, uh, and support those use cases. Uh, the working method, work, the way we work, we have a design team mailing list where we exchange the discussion and ideas. Uh, we have a weekly conference calls uh, every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Uh, European time. Uh, sometimes we skip uh, based on the content. And we have a GitHub area where we track documents, uh, input material, minutes, uh, and uh, open issues. What we have done so far, we have published a document, a use case document, revision number one, which is covering the description of one use case, a use case with a single domain and single layer. We look at how the net, we have developed an example of a reference network of this type and how this network can be controlled and which type of, we have assumed some topology abstraction, for example, that for a single network, the PNC can provide all the details to the MDSC. And we have started to describe a few, uh, a few services that this network can provide. For example, the, uh, the ODU transit. So an ODU that is starting and ending outside of our network and has to cross our network or EPL or other client, uh, OTN client services. We have many clients uh, uh, defined for OTN like STMN, uh, FiberChan and InfiniBand. We want to see how they can be supported. And uh, what we need to do, we have many works to do on these drafts, uh, more uh, use cases like EVPL, EVP, EVP3, EVP LAN, uh, virtual network services. Uh, we want to uh, discuss something about the multi-layer access, multi-function access links. So when we have a link which can be configured as a, a 10 gigabit Ethernet link, STM64 or, or OTM, depending on the service configuration. And we have uh, uh, other use cases when we want to see single domain, multi-layer, Multi-domain, single layer, and multi-domain, multi-layer. We have got input for all of them, and we have to describe all of them, and we have to prioritize a bit since it's a huge number of cases that we have to consider. We started also to do some analysis. The analysis just started, so we have no any drafts ready for submission so far. And we have analyzed how the audio transit service can be implemented in the use case number one. From this analysis, we get many details, uh, comments, and questions. We have already started to discuss with the models uh, authors of the T-Tunnel, and we got some changes to the T-Tunnel model to clarify and to support uh, this use case. And the next steps is uh, we have still uh, many open issues to address, uh, so we want to address all of them, and we want to complete the analysis of this use case and continue the analysis of the other use cases on a uh, contribution basis. And uh, okay, this is a quick overview of what is use case number one. We have a network, a transport network, which is uh, providing interconnection uh, for different routers. Uh, and uh, we assume that uh, we have a, a transport PNC exporting via a, a transport MPI uh, information about the network to the MDSC, and the MDSC is providing a P plus optical coordination 
we are making assumption about we are we we, we there is a CMI there is an APMPI but uh, this is out of scope of our work we are just assuming that something is happening uh, but we don't care about how this is done because it's outside of our scope uh, we care about what information needs to carry over this interface and uh, the example of the audio tunnel setup so we have uh, the, this the topology which is uh, abstracted at the MPI and in order to have an ODU that's starting from router number one, goes to router number three, and transit the network from these ingress and egress points, we need to create a T tunnel with uh, the first zero element pointing to this LTP and, uh, and the last zero elements pointing to la this LTP. And, we, uh, and uh, that will be a segment of an end to end tunnel. So we have analyzed in details all the attributes that need to be set up. These slides, I will go very quickly, is describing all the elements that needs to be provided uh, and some questions that we got uh, and we have a, a, lo a, lo a set of open issues that we need to discuss uh, some have been already addressed uh, but these one are still pending so when we look at the hero element how much time do i have <laughs> minus one minus one <laughs> okay so uh, we have uh, some uh, uh, in the tunnel mode the hero is saying router ID interface id in the T topology, we don't have router ID interface ID, so how do we get this information? We have an assumption. The router ID is then T node ID, and the interface ID is the T TP ID, but we have to validate that with the authors of the two drafts. Uh, we have some discussion about how do we configure the ODU2 time slots on the access link, so whether uh, it is selected by the MDSC, whether there is some negotiation, there is uh, some uh, suggested label coming up from the, uh, from the PNC and this is still a uh, discussion ongoing, uh, then uh, um, that's the, the, the also the possibility to have some suggested label and negotiation depends on the rest of operations. When you create a tunnel and you get an answer, is the tunnel okay, is the tunnel already set up or is just your request is accepted? And then how do you know if the tunnel has been set up or not? We have also some discussion to be done about the other draft on the transport control not young whether it is applicable to our various cases or not depends also on the applicability on CMI and MPI. We need to talk with the authors of this draft. And as we have seen, uh, when we start documenting the, how the model is used, we can use a PowerPoint, which is easy to write, but is much more difficult to put in an iterative draft. We can do it in text, but text is uh, complex to write uh, all the indent. So we would like to see some tools to help us uh, and this ongoing discussion on how to do that. And then we have uh, some uh, issue about the scope that we got a question whether we have to analyze uh, in terms of analysis so other SDO young models. Uh, our current assumption is that the use cases that we work through are should be the superset of all the use cases from all the SDOs. Uh, but the analysis should be focused on the ITF young model since we are in ITF. And of course, uh, the, our document is open, so we appreciate if other SDO can take our use cases and analyze their own draw. Young models, how they support uh, uh, the, use, the superset of the use cases that we have. And then uh, what document the analysis? So the idea now is to have a different draft for analysis and to split the, the use case, which is independent from the model, from the analysis that is saying how the model is addressing the use cases. And we have got a question about the technology specific augmentation. And we, we, we have seen some individual drafts of OTN augmentation. We plan to consider them in our work. That, that's all. <laughs> Co comment? Uh, Iftikhar and Fenera. Quick question on the um, me, like e-line e services, like use case. Mm -hmm. so, so in that case, you would be talking about, like, for example, Ethernet services over MPLS, over OTN, or, or what over is the... OTN. Oh, yeah. so uh, Ethernet over OTN? Yeah, yeah. So, like, ELAN service, how would you do that? Yeah, that we, we discuss, yes. <laughs> there, will, there is a architecture to support ELAN over OTN, yeah. We will discuss that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, data plane architecture, we assume the IQT data plane architecture, it's, yeah. So yeah, <clears throat> um, I think I, I wrote also on uh, an email on the Explorer about uh, the, the usage of, of layering. Um, so maybe you can just go back to the picture with the Rodem over there. That one, yeah. <clears throat> so um, I think there was some, let's say, loose, some loose wording, at least on the email, um, uh, about layers. So for example, if you look at this, uh, where is the transponder? 
the next picture seems to assume that the transponder is in that uh, rectangle boxes in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. um, the previous picture. Well, the the assumption here is that all these are ODU cross connect, electrical cross connect, okay. switching traffic at the ODU layer. And uh, this is then the agency at the ODU layer. And we don't see in our use case, in this use case, which is single layer, yep. we don't want to control the layer zero, which is below the layer one. Which is fair. Again, if you go back to the, to the previous one, um, yep. so there's there's a kind of a mixture of saying, okay, what, what do you really define in your use case as to be a layer? Is it a kind of uh, what previously has been said, loosely said to be a control layer? So you have a GMPLS, uh, say, uh, TDM or ODU, mm -hmm. is this your layer you're really caring about or do you already go, uh, let's say, on, on ITU layers and have a controller for each individual ITU layer? So there's, there's absolutely no clarity about what what exactly you're, you're really addressing here. In this use case, we say there is a single layer ODU that is just switching, ODU switching, huh? no multiplexing and no... That's perfect, but you know that there are several ODUs, each of the ODUs is a different layer, so are you telling that... No, okay, yeah, I see what you mean. You want to say whether we have a topology, I think the assumption is to have a single topology, but we, we can discuss okay. that. But that's, that's, that's uh, uh, okay, yeah, okay, I see your so point. So you need to get the terminology there right. Okay, that's yeah. message. okay. Hi, Lou Berger. Um, you're using the transport MPI as the reference for this, is that correct? Yes, this one, yeah. Okay, so where are you getting your requirements? Because I heard you talking about that there's a mismatch in some models versus the requirements. So where are you getting your requirements? Mismatch. You said that you needed, um, I think you said node ID plus something else. Actually. Oh, yeah, 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 no, no, this is about here. When you want to set up the tunnel here, mm -hmm. you need to identify this point. And if you look at so the hero... Where, where are you driving, deriving your requirements? Are you, are you running from other, you said you've looked at um, we, other yes, SDOs? Yes, we look at all the use cases uh, yeah. and we say, well, we have a use case where we have a, 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 an, o, an ODU network, which is providing a, a, the ODU starting, we have an end-to-end -end ODU from router one to router three, mm -hmm. which has to cross my net, my our network. Um, so, so the end-to-end -end ODU is clearly seen by the MDSC because the MDSC controls everything. But uh, on this interface, what you need to ask is an audio segment that is uh, entering the network from this point and leaving the network from this point. So there's different ways to model this. And, mm -hmm. and um, the work that's going on in ACTN, or in T's, hasn't quite gotten to the same level of detail that you are, um, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I'll get there in a second. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how you went from your requir your stated requirements to worrying about something that's pretty low level um, without that larger work have been, having been done. So I guess we can go through a couple things. First of all, there's a requirements document, right, for ACTN. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you look at that? N not. We, we derived the use cases, okay. not the requirements. So there's yeah. a requirements document for the transport mm -hmm. MPI. Yeah. It'd be really interesting to see if your use cases are identifying any requirements that are not okay. satisfied in that document. That would be really helpful. So you would like useful. us to look at the use case, at the requirements uh, of ACTN to see if there are missing requirements in the ACTN that do to address this use case. That's right. Okay. Um, okay. So you know th this work, I expected to talk about use cases. Yeah. The presentation is getting into solutions. No, no. We have, as I said, we have two work. Use case is describing a use case, and analysis is describing a solution for our, for the use cases. And this one is the use case, and uh, and then this one is already the analysis. The thing I'm struggling with is how are you doing an analysis on work that hasn't been done yet? The analysis, the use case has been done, but the full yeah. solution hasn't been specified for what ACTN means in T's, right? I don't catch your comment, sorry. <laughs> so, so ACTN is talking about this VN model, right? That's yeah. happening, that happened, we talked about that yesterday. Yeah. How does that relate to this? Oh, VN model is here. Which are we are not considering that for this we are looking at here and here okay. we have a tunnel. And are you model. only looking at tunnel? Or are you also looking so at So far topology? we are looking only at the tunnel and the topology model. Okay. On this interface, yeah. Okay. It would be really useful to do that sanity check, and then to identify anything that's missing, 
in those models. Yeah, that's exactly what we are doing. Yeah. Okay. In the I analysis. Don't think, I don't think. All right. We have not found missing. We have found something which is not clear. For example, uh, for example, what we said, we noticed that uh, when you look at the tunnel model, the hero is either the node uh, or uh, the label. So, and then we made the clarification that we have to put two heroes, one for the node and one for the node. So this clarification were not very. We didn't know that. Uh, so we got that feedback from the T topology experts. Uh, and we are continuing on doing that analysis in details, yeah. Okay, and, and what have you found in the um, protocol-specific models that are being developed in this group? For the protocol-specific, we will that's, we are going to analyze the individual drafts on OTN, and then we will provide feedbacks to them. So not there yet? Not yet there, yeah. No problem, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Igor, please, super quick. quick so, uh, just a quick, a quick comment. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, when we do a tier tunnel model, and we, we, we do not assume that it is actually provisioned by uh, RSVP. Okay, so uh, we are not making assumption here about no, no, how right, the right. PNC so, so, does. So we, we, we do not uh, basically think in terms of RSVP. So ERO for us, it's the same tier path as tier path defined the tier topology. It's the same. Yeah, it's okay. uh, the explicit root element. Maybe yeah, we yeah. can we, make, uh, uh, we can use the. It's, it's young a, it's term a, rather than the RSVP term. It's that's, either node ID yeah. slash index or, yeah. or just a yeah. number link ID. Yeah. 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 Okay, I will, we will fix with the young model terms. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. This is Gabriel Galimberti speaking and presenting the LMP uh, draft uh, for the author. First of all, I should. Uh, apologize with Dieter because uh, I didn't update uh, the company name <laughs> and uh, second because uh, Dieter actually is not uh, um, taking part of the Flex uh, uh, interface LMP uh, work and uh, I will fix uh, the document. So the consideration uh, for this uh, two draft are uh, related to uh, implement the LMP protocol and define all the parameters that uh, an interface located on the client can share with, uh, with the network. Um, the, mm, the LMP is not, uh, or is not going to be used to uh, do any kind of provisioning. It's just uh, a negotiation, or no, not a negotiation, it's just uh, a um, declaration of uh, the interface characteristics. Uh, the second draft we are presenting uh, is uh, extending also the uh, parameter to support uh, the SSON uh, interfaces. Um, <clears throat> from the previous uh, uh, version document, the SICAM uh, DWDM interface LMP v3 is, uh, has just been uh, updated and uh, um, did a few cosmetic uh, changes, uh, while uh, the uh, CCAM Flex interface LMP is uh, uh, the first time uh, I'm presenting, so uh, can be considered as a zero zero here. Okay, um, we are dealing here uh, about LMP, uh, just to state, to clarify, LMP between uh, the client interface uh, that uh, are uh, on, uh, on located on the on the uh, external of DWDM, inter DWDM network and uh, the ROM. Um, in ca in uh, the uh, DWDM interface LMP, uh, we have defined as uh, uh, agree in the last uh, uh, ITF meeting uh, to manage the. Um, the uh, uh, application code only as per ITUT recommendation plus the output power and the current input power. These are all the parameters that uh, are enough uh, to, uh, let's say, um, tell the, the network what kind of interface we have. In SSON uh, extension, we have a bunch of parameters. For sake of uh, uh, time, I think, uh, I, don't, I don't comment all those parameters, but uh, I uh, suggest uh, or I ask you to uh, look at uh, the, the draft 
that is uh, an experimental draft is not uh, uh, normative and uh, uh, give uh, us feedbacks. So next step for the DWDN interface, I think uh, could be ready to uh, become a working group document uh, as uh, um, is consolidated and also in the last ITF uh, we, we got uh, a, a good feedback but not negative feedback. For the uh, FlexGrid interface, I think uh, uh, we expect to have a lot of feedbacks because it is brand new. Thanks a lot. We are almost in time, thanks to you. We will now skip uh, um, slots uh, 7, 8, and 9. They are in the agenda, but uh, uh, they will be discussed uh, in the joint uh, young session. We will move to slot number 10 with the uh, Hi, this is Iftikhar Hussain. I will be presenting on behalf of my colleagues uh, the work on the Beyond 100G. So these are three documents which actually we collected together, uh, the framework uh, and the, then the two solution documents, signaling and routing. Okay, so first I'll talk about the, uh, uh, okay, what is the problem? So in the existing uh, G709 version 2012, it actually defines the OTN capabilities and the signaling and routing extensions to cover that are already specified in the uh, RFCs mentioned over here. Uh, in 2016 version of the G709, uh, beyond 100G's capabilities or OTN capabilities are introduced. So since those uh, functions are not addressed uh, from the routing and signaling perspective, so here I'll be talking about uh, in the framework, for example, what are those new requirements, uh, new capabilities, and then the corresponding routing and signaling extension quickly. Okay, so uh, the framework. So there we actually have published a framework document listed in the reference over here. So I'm not gonna go to list all the gory detail, but here in essentially this summarizes some of the new capabilities which are defined in G709. For example, OTUCN signal beyond 100 G rate and the corresponding ODUCN uh, as well as uh, the transport of the OTUCN over Flexo uh, interfaces, mapping of different these signals onto these new containers, and if, uh, another important uh, new thing which is introduced is a five gig granularity, but uh, you know time star granularity. This is a different than what was uh, so far defined in G7709. Uh, and so, so there's a maybe more uh, items here, but I think if you have uh, more detail, you can refer to the framework document. Uh, so they are captured there, and then also the actual source, G709, okay? So, uh, okay, so in the framework document, we also list some of the uh, use cases. If you remember in the last ITF, actually, I think if Gert, I think remember, so some of the use, I think was presented there, so this actually extends some of the use case list. Uh, we'd like to actually uh, folks to take a look and give a comment if there's some something is missing. Uh, so it actually uh, talks about a uh, mix of different OTU links, the traditional OTU links, and also the, there's a multi-hub concept. Uh, okay, that's covered all those cases. And uh, based on those use cases, uh, we think the solution needs to be addressed all those use cases when the solution comes up. Please take a look. If you see some use cases incorrect, give us a feedback or something is, you know, you need, need to add more use cases, let us know. Okay. Uh, so then another one is based on the use cases, actually we identify some, what, are, what does it mean? What solution we need to look for? So. 
some of the things, for example, is uh, from the routing perspective, we need to be able to advertise uh, the uh, encoding type. Uh, the switching and determination and multiplex uh, multiplexing capabilities for these new links, because eventually these links are going to be going to the TET topology database, and then you need to make a path computation. And then from the signaling perspective, also uh, the different signal types, granularity, uh, allo uh, TPN allocation, uh, and then basically also the reduced, uh, reduced uh, rate links. So all those uh, functionality, the signaling solution should be able to address. Okay, keeping uh, all these implications or the requirements, solution requirements in mind, I'll just briefly uh, go over some of the signaling and routing extension, what we're proposing here. Okay, so summary of the routing extension. So uh, as we just mentioned that we need to extend the, uh, the routing uh, OSPF uh, traffic engineering capabilities. So here, for example, we summarize as uh, captured in bullet number two. Uh, then we need to extend, for example, SC uh, switching capability specific information field uh, and also the ISCD. Okay, these, these, this message. So here it's providing a summary as far as the ISCD format is concerned. We're just defining, this solution is defining a new encoding type, just reusing the existing capability as there's no need for changing that. Okay. Uh, if they have, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but we are really short in time. Okay. Could you please focus uh, on the framework uh, part, uh, and then we okay, okay, start the discussion on okay. uh, encoding. The okay, fine. So I think the framework I'm covered. I'm just gonna quickly flash through this one. Then, so here is the solution. I'm not gonna talk about it, but this is the extension. People can look in the draft. And similarly for the uh, signaling, uh, there's a solution proposed and then short of time I'm not going to talk here uh, uh, so I'm going to come to the last one so if there are any comments uh, uh, please yeah uh, Dieter Nokia uh, I have a question for clarification are you assuming that the ODUCN is a switchable sub layer no okay actually so I, I didn't get a chance actually so that's one of the things you need to actually indicate this is a non switchable at, at so yeah. it's an aggregation sublayer, right? It is actually sort of actually a section layer. Okay. Yeah. So actually, uh, I, I didn't actually, maybe I can just, just since you asked the question. So uh, you see this field, a T and S field. So what we're saying is T field must be set to one to indicate terminated. And then S must be set to zero to say non-switchable. So uh, there's some examples shown uh, in the draft and also in the, in the slide. We actually show some uh, different example how these TLV will be used for different, you know, different multiplexing cases. Um, but short of time, I'm not going over it. Uh, also in the draft, they are covered. John Sadler, a uh, couple of comments. Um, with respect to it not being a switching layer, it's not clear what the need for a signal type assignment is. We don't have a signal type assignment for the MS layer in SDH, so it's not clear the need here. I'd like to see that developed further in the in the uh, framework draft. I do think there are some use cases for it, but uh, Anyway, some, some development there would be good. Uh, second is uh, there is a restriction on the number of TPNs allowed uh, per link. I'm not seeing that uh, strongly talked about in the draft either. Um, okay, it's I'll... not 20, which is what we have in the equivalent in uh, um, the regular G709 work. It's 10. So you can't put as many links as you have tributary slots um, or signals as you have tributary slots. Uh, third is the uh, OTUCN. Uh, work. Um, Flexo work in ITU hasn't been published yet. It's still work in progress. So we need to coordinate and make certain we don't get ahead of uh, their activities there. Yes. Um, I agree it's work that needs to be discussed here, but uh, it might be good to actually separate the extensions for that just so we can get the, the yeah. uh, CN work out first. Uh, the, I, the think, ODUCN work I think first. it's quite well. Actually, in the framework, you're right. In the framework document, we are saying it's TBD under discussion. But I think something as in a use case we need to actually identify because this is reuse of like uh, uh, electrical interfaces which are existing. So you can reuse those interfaces, for example, for the OTUC and inter for short reach, right? Right. Understood. So yes. So so I'll send my comments. To Please send to send your comments to the list and we'll try to address those. Yeah. Hi, it is good. Um, I, I basically voiced my comments already on the list. So 
Uh, I find the, the framework uh, draft very uh, well written. Um, there's only one use case I kind of uh, still missing because there was a lot of work uh, here uh, uh, related to protection switching on the data plane and just according to signaling and everything. I think that would be worth to be added as well. Okay. Uh, so, because there are other implications yeah. based on the new layering structure. If you could please send your comments on the list also. Uh, I did already, but probably that kind okay. of got slipped. We, okay, <laughs> okay. We will we'll make sure that we look at it and then see. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. This is Hamian, and uh, I'm going to introduce uh, a, a couple of uh, uh, G.709 uh, drafts also. So basically, we will have uh, one framework draft and one signaling extension work. Actually, the other routing extension work is also ready, but it's not on the agenda this time. So I will try to also uh, incorporate some of the content in this presentation. So here are some of the overview of the, these three drafts. Actually, um, the uh, the drafts are based on the uh, ITUT uh, definition of the ODOCN and uh, the uh, edition five of G.709 uh, consider about the beyond 100 giga uh, data plane. And uh, we assume that the corresponding control plane uh, work need to be uh, addressed in the CCAM working group. And uh, in the draft, we uh, took a brief review of what is going on for uh, G.709 V5 and uh, including uh, including how this uh, client signal is mapped into audio scene and what is the new features of that. So uh, after some uh, analysis, so we try to uh, figure out uh, the implications of the uh, GMPRS uh, signaling and routing that need to be uh, uh, extend and we try to give the corresponding description of the pr protocol extension. So the uh, in the version five of the G.709, uh, the new things including uh, the one new uh, signal type that is the audio CN and uh, there is also a separate named as ODCNM, which is not an uh, int integral time of the 100 giga. And another new issue is a uh, new uh, tributary slot granularity has been defined as a 5 giga. And for ODCN, uh, the, the, the number of the tributary slot is always 20 uh, multiplied by n. So, um, in the G.709 uh, version 5, it is also described on how the audio scene will, uh, is worked together with audio K. So the, usually the, the, the client signal will be uh, firstly uh, multiplied to the uh, audio K and then carried by the audio scene or audio scene. So it is not a switching uh, for the audio scene layer. And uh, it will always go to the audio K first. So by uh, analyzing this kind of features, we try to uh, address uh, this kind of signaling uh, implications. The first, uh, there are totally five issues we need to address in the signaling extension. The first one is to uh, support the new signal type audio CN. We will add a new signal type. And the second one is to support the new tributary stock granularity, which is five giga. And we will also add one more uh, section for, for, for this granularity. The third one is we need to support of the RSP setup for the uh, audio CN containers. And uh, we are going to extend the uh, generalized uh, label to support this. And we will also extend the TPN allocation together with the supporting of the audio CN app. And for the routing implementation, so we also need to extend the RSCD to uh, describe the how to uh, express the link multiplexing and uh, how to advertise the, the, the five giga tributary slot granularity and also how to advertise the, the, the separate OTOCNM. 
So uh, what we are trying to uh, give an open discussion here is uh, I think we need to first uh, confirm with all the experts here about the scope because uh, we notice there are some ongoing works, including some uh, Flex O and Flex Ethernet, some kind of this work which are highly related with the audio scene. Uh, and uh, we need to confirm whether this kind of Flex O and Flex Ethernet is in in the scope or out of scope of this this uh, uh, draft, because both of these are part of the G.709 but uh, we can address this kind of work separately in, in, in separate drafts. And the second issue is uh, about the separate, the OTOC and the M is uh, a kind of uh, appendix. So which can be included or can, should be excluded in the draft. And uh, for the use case, so we, 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 will, uh, we will try to add more informative use case according to the decision of the previous scope discussion. So uh, yeah, there is uh, other works just presented by IFTICA, and uh, we are trying to uh, coordinate and work together with other, other draft and uh, try to uh, converge as soon as possible. After that, we are going mm -hmm. to uh, ask for uh, WG adoption, and uh, we can then uh, draft for a single thread of sol solution rather than competition. So that is all of the uh, presentation. Comments? I guess most of the comments uh, the previous presentation uh, also apply to this one, for example, the open question on uh, uh, Flex O, the fact that it needs uh, uh, to be uh, out of this scope of this document. Okay, so we we all agree with that. I would suggest also to keep the flex internet inside the scope uh, of uh, of this document and uh, address it maybe in uh, in other documents. Yeah, uh, I think the flex E uh, can be divided into into a flex E over audio K and uh, flex E over audio C. So audio CM may be rela related with this one. We can mention it a little bit, but do not yeah. need to work out the solution here. And then uh, the, the obvious comment, which is uh, trying to come uh, to, the, to the working group with a single document that I see you, you already started with this emerging process, at least discussing it with the other other so Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think we have a consensus we're going to come up with the one one document and uh, also from the from the last ITF meeting I think the chairs emphasized the solution so that's by the way that's one of the reason we kind of speeded up the solution part because it was emphasized that okay let's not worry let, let's let's worry about use cases let's talk about the solution so that's why we speed it up so but we are Align with whatever the strategy we need to take. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I agree. Actually, I, I read all the solutions charts. I think that uh, the extension is quite really simple and uh, straightforward. Those kind of solution uh, could be, you know, based on uh, G.7 online with straight charts. Actually, to find find both chairs. So I think actually we can spend more time on the solutions and uh, not spend too much time on the framework. Yeah. Use case stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but when we talk about use case, which identify which kind of use use case is useful for us to design the protocols. Understood. I I'm just mentioning that the reason for speeding up the solution was we thought, hey, this is actually important. The group is giving a message that yeah. work on a solution rather than the use cases. This, this is yeah. always uh, a, a good move. But since there are two frameworks, uh, I mean, it's better to at least uh, uh, find an agreement on the framework before starting with the solution. Yeah, agree. Thank you. Next, okay. please. Gabriele. Okay, Gabriele Galimberti. 
and uh, and presenting uh, a, another experimental uh, proposal we have done uh, in collaboration with the uh, research center uh, in Trento Trento University uh, basically the motivation of this uh, uh, experimental work is uh, to extend uh, what uh, what is the signal already present for the WSON network also to the SSON network in uh, uh, in the specific case where uh, and when um, the client interface is actually uh, a multi-carrier interface so that uh, the the reason we uh, present this uh, proposal as experimental is because uh, ITUT does not specify yet how uh, to manage some parameters like, uh, for example, the modulation format, and uh, um, also is not 100% clear how to deal with the, the subcarrier position uh, inside the spectrum. Uh, there is something in uh, G872, but uh, is not 100% clear to me. Um, we refer also the um, or existing uh, RFC uh, for the SSON, so the uh, 7698, uh, where uh, there is a definition of a media channel and also um, the uh, OTSI that uh, uh, can be associated to uh, the subcarrier, and also this. Uh, um, work can uh, extend uh, the, the signaling uh, and uh, uh, the, the 7698 and 7792. Uh, the scope, the, um, let's say, the reason uh, we want to uh, have uh, this extension is because uh, uh, between uh, the client interface that uh, are located in uh, a router or TN switch or whatever and uh, the road port, uh, we might have a single channel or a, let's say a media channel that uh, is uh, populated with multiple carriers. How we can signal those carriers around the network uh, can be, uh, is needed Number one, to coordinate the two endpoints, and number two also is needed by the route, by the ROM uh, to understand where uh, the frequency of the subcarrier are positioned and uh, control uh, the power via OTDR, via uh, optical channel monitoring. Basically, uh, what we want to uh, what we identify, how we identify uh, the subcarrier inside the media channel, other than having uh, the uh, sorry, okay, or other than having the uh, value of n and the grid and the media channel identifier, we add the other uh, two other parameters related to the position of the single carrier compared to the central frequency of the media channel. In other words, we, um, we uh, added two new parameters. One is uh, uh, K, that is uh, the position, as I said, of the uh, single carrier or the specific carrier compared to the uh, N value. And so we have uh, uh, as many K we have uh, as many um, subcarrier. The granularity of K can be defined either as default value, for example, 0 0.1 gigahertz, or can be defined as a, a G, J parameters uh, that can have a, a granularity at more or less 0 0.01 gigahertz. So that uh, during the signaling, uh, we have uh, the N value, the M value, which gives us uh, the uh, media channel width, and uh, a number of K identifying inside the media channel all uh, the subcarrier. Uh, next step is, uh, of course, to have feedbacks on that. 
because uh, now um, the technology, the SSON technology is becoming ready, and uh, uh, so uh, some implementation are uh, going to be uh, deployed. Thanks a lot. One one comment. So, Gab, I think actually right now you are making a lot of experimental uh, jobs, you know, which is not common for us in IPF. You know, I think only one experimental per five years, that's fine. But, you know, too many experiments in one year is not common, you know, it's not usual. <laughs> so, um, this is uh, uh, your company specific things, you can keep it, you know, and feature. Yes, uh, I think uh, um, you are right, um, but again, um, this proposal is uh, uh, also to understand whether uh, the solution could be uh, accepted once, uh, for example, uh, I2T uh, defines the way to uh, def define the parameter that uh, uh, we are going to, to use. Because you know the framework cannot, you know, uh, go ahead of the, you know, it plan technologies. Excuse me. I mean, uh, can the framework cannot, you know, uh, go ahead of the data, I do here, data framework. Okay. Um, uh, Dieter Nokia, uh, I was wondering whether this work you mentioned this is a the outcome of a, a European research project. Um, Whether well, this work is rather related to IRTF uh, as opposed to this working this, group? This, um, we discuss uh, uh, this work uh, in this, this proposal. Actually, I propose this solution in Idealist project. It is a, a European project, expired uh, last year. Yeah, second question was why uh, are you not presenting this work in IRTF? Because uh, uh, what's the purpose uh, for presenting this or for um, uh, creating an uh, experimental RFC in CCAM? That, that, uh, that could be a good suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Italo Buzzi from Huawei. Uh, yes, I second the comment about why, what we are doing here is we are configuring something, but we have still don't know how the data plane can interoperate. As far as I understand from people in question six is that Defining the optical parameters to ensure interoperability of the optical layer is, is not an easy process. So we are going too fast, but we are, are we going to the right direction? Because the, the attributes are not known. But at this uh, if you time. are a single vendor, in any case, you have to solve this kind of problem. Yes, but it's a single vendor. Yes. So are we standardizing single vendor solutions now? No, no. <laughs> OK. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> Uh, of writing an RFC for for something which is not interoperable. I, if I don't interoperate in the data plane, why I want to see um, something? To me, the interoperation of the data plane is uh, uh, a matter of uh, doing tests together, and uh, there are some activity on this uh, in this direction. So, um, okay, you have to be specific what you want to make interoperable but uh, it's not unfeasible. And uh, we have some experiment done. Right. <laughs> yes, it's probably the experiment is not uh, commercial. Yes, they are the experiment. Interoperability they, they, is much no, more no, than no. just they are, trying. They are experiment now, but they will, uh, will go in production. Okay. <laughs> Trying to join the discussion, as Italio was mentioning, there is some interoperability appearing, at least when you split the line and the transponders. So you don't have full interoperability between transponders, but alien use cases are becoming more and more common. And this is typical as written a draft for the UNI, meaning between the transponder and the line, you need this kind of work to start the, the progresses. So starting as single vendor with experimental is a way to initiate the work. And I disagree with Dieter, this is not for ITF, IRTF, this is for products and implementations. So it does, it is legitimate to talk about that here. Mm -hmm.
Thank you. We have several RFCs that started as European projects. Okay. And not at the NC camp. <laughs> okay, last presentation. We are a little bit late, but we, 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 have, uh, we will have uh, a dedicated session uh, exactly. later today. Yeah. So I'm we just still five minutes to the break. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is good enough. So I'm just going to give a status update. So I'm going to skip, for example, what, what is Lexi, what the problem. Uh, just give a status. So we met uh, since uh, so. So we actually identified these are the things which needs to be done. So for example, revise the abstract, uh, review the use cases, and update the requirements, provide more uh, content in the framework and architecture section, analyze the existing solution, and start working on that one. So since then, so this is what has happened. So uh, we did revise the abstract. We agree on the use cases, actually, and work, uh, we had several meetings, uh, including uh, one conference call and a lot of discussions on the email. And we have added information on the framework section, published the revised uh, framework as version 2. And we have started initial discussion on the existing solutions. Uh, and then uh, so that's where we are. Uh, so we are following what's happening in other SDOs and then what are like a new use cases like, you know, as we discuss are coming up, we're keeping an eye on those. And what are the next steps? So the next step is really to start focusing on the solution and uh, by the next ITF, hopefully come up with the routing and signaling solution, uh, converged consensus solution and complete the architecture, uh, you know, uh, framework document and uh, I'll start maybe discussing on the Yang, Yang models, and get a feedback. Uh, any questions uh, or comments? So there's going to be a separate discussion later on. Yeah, people. Thanks a lot for being so quick. Uh, as we said, uh, we sent an announcement on the mailing list saying that, that tonight will be, there will be a, a side meeting dedicated to Plexi. You are all, uh, uh, more than welcome to join it. Uh, did yeah. I just want to make a, a, one comment regarding the uh, draft that was presented here? I think there are still a, f a few flaws. Uh, we can take that offline, but I would like to mention that here that uh, there's still some uh, technical stuff in the in the document which is not 100% correct. So do you, do you mean the Flexi framework? Doc? Okay. Uh, so please send us a comment. So we'll try to. We did try to take care of the one you sent last time, but if something is still missing, we will definitely like to address it. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So, for those interested in uh, Flexi, we'll meet uh, later today. For the rest of you interested in Young, we're going to meet on uh, Friday together with MPLS, uh, PC, and TIS. And for the others, uh, let's uh, let's see in uh, uh, Prague. Yes, it's on the list. Zurich B. Thank you. Where's Lucius? <laughs>